What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome to the channel. In this video I'll be showing you a quick setup guide to prepare yourself for the Nuka World DLC in the form of a top 10 video. Well it's kind of a top 10 video but maybe it's more like a top 20. I've just tried to make this video as helpful as I can for you guys. I wanted to make this video with a few quick tips on some weapons and armor combinations that you can consider and how you can use them to help you deal with the new enemies and even the more difficult high level enemies that you're going to be encountering in Nuka World. So I've compiled all this information into a top 10 categories of things to bring to Nuka World in no specific order. So what you're going to find is as soon as you take the monorail into Nuka World, you'll be greeted by a whole assault course of enemies and traps. This is probably going to be quite hard to deal with depending on your level. So let's get into this top 10 video. So firstly at number 10, which is neither a weapon nor armour, we have pre-war money. Yes, that's right. Pre-war money is actually very useful in this DLC because it's used to purchase Nuka Cade tokens. These tokens are used to activate the various machines that you'll find in the Nuka Cade, which is basically an arcade. So when you win on these machines, you'll get tickets that can then be used to get rewards. You might be wondering, ESO, where do I find lots and lots of pre-war money? Well, my friend, it may be worth taking a look down in the description where I've put a guide on how to get a few hundred pre-war dollars quickly so you can grab loads and loads of Nuka Cade tokens as soon as you get to the arcade. I'll also put a guide down there on how to get lots of caps as well, so you can stock up on that before you leave. Next, at number 9, this is aimed at those of you who like melee weapons. And indeed, it's a very accessible weapon that's also pretty underrated because most people just don't try it out. This weapon is called General Chow's Revenge. Now the thing is with melee weapons, you can get ones that do lots and lots of damage to human or super mutant opponents, but then you'll struggle with robots. So with this melee weapon, you actually find it's the most versatile melee weapon in the game, as it's super effective against both humans, and most importantly, versus robots. This weapon has the potential to deal 355 damage versus humans, and 682 damage versus robots. This is partly because of the weapon's legendary effect that makes it do 50% more damage to robots. It also has a serrated blade, which has a bleed effect that deals more damage to humans. And I'll leave a guide on how to get this weapon down in the description, but it's just an all-round solid weapon that will never let you down. Next, in at number 8, is the Junk Jet. This is kind of a fun one. It's not necessarily an absolute necessity to take it with you, but you will find that it is quite useful in the Nuka Cade. You can actually cheat on some of these machines. For example, in this one, you can just pick up all the basketballs and then rapidly fire them into the basket to get lots and lots of points and obviously get lots of tickets from that. And of course, you can also take the copious amounts of respawning basketballs for yourself and just use them as ammunition, which is pretty ideal. So I do recommend bringing this, so you don't need to return for it later. But while we're on the subject of fun, I'd also suggest the unique Ashmaker minigun, or any minigun for that matter, because this weapon can actually also be used to cheat on the shooting gallery that's also found in the new Cade. You can literally just hold down the trigger and spray the target, and you'll find that it's the fastest way and most effective way of getting lots and lots of tickets that you can obviously then trade in for rewards. In at number 7 is Sergeant Ash. A unique flamer weapon that is easily the best flamer in the game. It has an incredible effect that must be bugged or something. Because if you fire at anything it will just instantly cripple them. This is because of its legendary effect which I'm sure is just broken on a flamer. It's perfect for taking out big enemies like the Deathclaw looking crocodile you'll find in the Nuka World DLC. That thing won't stand a chance with Sergeant Ash in your hands. The same is true for ghouls, who will get absolutely wrecked by this weapon. But the main reason you're going to want to bring this flamer is to help with any swarm enemies that you come across in the DLC. So instead of wasting any ammo that you have, you can just give a quick burst of fire to incinerate all of them. Now this weapon location can be found down in the description, 
but you will need the Far Harbor DLC to obtain it. If you don't have that DLC, I'll leave another option down below in the description that you can use instead. Number 6. Let's talk about armor, because obviously you won't be getting far without that. There are several options when it comes to armor, but I have narrowed it down to two choices. First we have the Marine Assault Armor. This is the best full armor set that you can get in the game in terms of all round damage resistance. It gives you a total of 159 physical damage resistance and 153 energy resistance. So just grab this set and you'll just be sorted. You'll be facing as many energy damage weapons as you will physical damage in Nuka World. It all depends which theme park zone you visit first, but with the Marine Assault Armor, you won't have to worry about that. You can only get this armor set in the Far Harbor DLC. So once again, if you don't have that, make sure that you pick up the synth armor instead. And I've also got a guide on where to get both of these down in the description. But the synth armor is actually the best set available in the base game of Fallout 4. And if you're really keen and you really want to maximize your armor, you might want to check out my full armor combo guide, which basically makes you invincible on survival difficulty. It will give you about 400 armor for both physical and energy resistance. So I'll leave a link on where to get both of those in the description below. So in at number 5 we have either the Spray and Pray Machine Gun or if you have the Far Harbor DLC you can get the much better Kiloton Rifle. Both weapons are very similar in the sense that they have the best legendary effect in the game or at least one of the best ones for a fast firing weapon, the explosive effect. With the right perks this weapon can do 45 explosive damage per second in an area of effect. So what you'll find is that it damages nearby targets and even different limbs on the same enemy. So this leads to monstrous damage. But on top of that, the Kiloton rifle also does 150 radiation damage per second, which will destroy any human opponents for you. In addition, the gun also has a ballistic damage of 93 damage per second, for a total of 288 damage to humans and 138 damage to everything else. And you'll just find with this weapon that it will shred anything and you'll never come up against an enemy that's difficult to kill with it. In at number 4, following the theme of explosive weaponry, let's talk about the Party Starter. This unique rocket launcher will solve all of your raider problems in a big bang. It does an extra 50% damage versus any human enemies. This means the weapon does 1139 damage per shot in an area of effect. That's actually more damage than a fat man mini nuke. Oh and don't forget that if you crouch down and do a sneak attack with this weapon you'll be doing over 2278 damage. So it's definitely the go-to weapon for raider killing. It will usually take care of anything in power armor too. You won't expect to fire more than a couple of shots. For everything else you fire this weapon at, it will do 615 damage, which is still pretty decent. Check out where you can get this weapon down in the description below. Up next in the countdown we have number 3. Here we will have the long range category. So for this we have the Overseer's Guardian a fully modded combat rifle used for sniping. Or if you like energy weapons, we have the more powerful energy weapon variant, the Gauss Rifle. You can of course get the Overseer's Guardian very early on as well, a unique combat rifle that is modded for sniping. The weapon has a unique legendary effect that makes it fire two bullets every shot. So this makes your sneak attacks absolutely monstrous. It's definitely one of the strongest weapons in the game. And it also uses a common ammo type, the 45 round. The Gauss rifle on the other hand is also extremely powerful, especially if you get one with the instigating legendary effect, which makes the weapon one hit kill everything in the game. And I'll leave a guide on where to get the Gauss rifle and also where to get one with the legendary effect that you need the Far Harbor DLC to get. Next up we have number 2, Power Armor. There are some unique power armor sets within Nuka World and if you want to take advantage of that you're obviously going to want to bring along some power armor yourself. We also have the unique Nuka Cola World paint job and like the Far Harbor paint jobs, 
This is only available for the T-51 power armor. So bear this in mind when you're heading over to Nuka World. And also be sure to check out the description on where you can get a full set of T-51 armor for free. But alternatively, if you just want to wear power armor for the added protection, you're obviously going to want the best power armor available which is the X01 power armor, boasting an energy resistance of 790 and a physical damage resistance of 1220, and of course a radiation resistance of 1050, which is very useful for getting through the irradiated sections that you'll have to pass through in the DLC. You can of course upgrade the armor even further with various modifications to suit your needs. But I'll leave a guide on how to get the full set down in the description below. If you're not a fan of power armor, make sure you bring a hazmat suit with you. And lastly, at number one, the best option for the gunslinger build. So you can get into the Nuka world and roleplay a western cowboy. This pistol is called the Deliverer, a unique semi-automatic 10mm pistol that has a legendary effect which basically improves the chance to hit in vats and it also reduces the cost of using it in VATS. You can actually spam this weapon in VATS if you have the right character build. The weapon actually has a very fast firing rate that's faster than a normal 10mm pistol. It's also one of the only unique weapons with a unique appearance, which is pretty cool. If you enjoy using VATS, this is definitely one of the best weapons for you. There are obviously many other useful weapons in Fallout 4, but in terms of the most versatile and top of the class in what they do, these are the ones that I tried to squish into the top 10 that I think you'll find to be the most effective in conquering this DLC. And of course, they are all relatively easy to obtain, but feel free to suggest other weapons in the comments below to help people out. As a bonus tip though, I'd also suggest checking out my chem guide, which shows you how to double your health, increase your damage by 50%, and also your accuracy in VATS, and increase your action points as well. And that buff will last for half an hour and you can just keep on reusing it. It's something that really does complement any build guide that you're using. Anyway guys, I do hope you found this video helpful. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a like. The more likes this video gets, the more top 10 videos I will make. But thanks again for watching and all your support. Make sure that you follow me on Facebook and Twitter or even Instagram for the latest news and updates about what I'm working on or you can just subscribe here on YouTube. My name is ESO, and I will see you, loyal subscriber, in the next Fallout 4 video guide. Thanks again for watching, good luck with your adventures in Nuka-Cola world, and I will see you in the next video guide. Goodbye!